Okay, so we're in the last section of chapter two, and this is a really interesting section in a lot of ways, but there's not a lot of work, if you will, so we're not going to be doing anything with Excel or anything like that, but um, we want to know what makes a graph a good graph and how are graphs used to lie and distort. So I have up here the guidelines for constructing good graphs, and there's these are just kind of some rules of thumb out there. There are more um, lists. You can actually probably type guidelines for constructing good graphs into Google and find all sorts of things. But here are mine. So actually, they're the authors. <laughs> so title and label the graphic axes clearly. Excuse me. And we did this when we made all of our Excel graphs. We always made sure to give it the chart a title. We made sure to label all our axes. We want our tick marks to be appropriately labeled, all of that stuff. Um, avoid distortion. That happens a lot when you, um, for example, have graphs that don't quite match up with the numbers you're saying. So like if one bar is 20 and the other bar is 10, but you don't actually have the 21 be twice as tall. Also, sometimes if you do three dimensional stuff, um, three dimensional pictures, it can distort which bar is biggest, which bar is smallest. Never use three dimensions, which is right down here. <laughs> Avoid three dimensions. Three dimensions may look nice, but they're distracting. They tend to distort because when you look at something, a three dimensional object, it's not the same as when you're looking at it in two dimensions. And of course, paper and graphs are drawn on two dimensions, not three. I mean, paper is a two dimensional surface. So once you try, start trying to draw three dimensional charts, you're inherently modifying and distorting what's going on. You want to, I'm going to go back up here, minimize the amount of white space in the graph. Use the available space to let the data stand out. Um, if you truncate the scales, clearly, clearly indicate this to the reader. Truncating the scales um, is kind of a controversial thing. You can do it, though. You just have to do it appropriately um, and make sure that it's obvious that you've truncated the scales. Sometimes it's for a good reason that the scales are truncated, but a lot of the times um, they're truncated, i.e. cut off. Um, for no good reason other than just to make um, somebody ha or to make it easier for somebody to make kind of a distorted point. Next, avoid clutter, excessive excessive grid lines, unnecessary backgrounds, pictures. Most of the um, graphs that you're going to see in newspapers, magazines, websites, they're going to have a lot of clutter a lot of the time, and that's not a good thing. Next is the do not use more than one design in the same graph, right? Well, don't make one a bar and one a circle and one a square or something like that, right? Keep them all consistent. Let the data speak for itself. And then avoid relative graphs that are devoid of data or scales, right? You want tick marks, you want labels, right? You don't want just generic graphs going out there in the sky. All right, so let's look at some graphs that are just horrid. And this is actually one of the worst graphs I've ever seen. It is so cluttered. It is a hockey rink, believe it or not. And it's a bar graph, I guess. I, I don't really need, It's actually even a kind of a time series graph because it's got these different years. But you got the, the hockey player in the background. You got all the circles. You got the extra lines. I mean, I'm not even sure where the bars end. Do they end of the puck or do they end at the start of the puck or the end of the puck? Who knows? I don't know. So it is a giant mess. It is totally breaking the... Um, avoid clutter rule, right? All right, so let me write it down. There we go. Graph has a, this graph has a ton of clutter and I wrote down some of those items. Also, if you look down here at the speed, it's a little bit unclear of where the zero is. So they start 20 right here, but where is zero? Is zero starting where their name starts? So the horizontal axis tick marks, which is called a scale, is not really clear. Where is zero, for example? Right? All right, that's that graph. And then we have this one. This one's from Planet Money. And it's a disaster because you have these two circles, but of course, circles don't exactly grant scale. So um, there's, oopsie, there's no tick marks, no scale. Um, circles are actually okay if, as long as you grant a circle scale somewhere in the in a legend, and that this doesn't have that. There we go. No tick marks, no scale, no axes, no axis labels. It's a mess. 